Hello, I'm Paul Wells. This is chapter two of the story about the remote piano teaching device. Chapter one, if you haven't seen it, there's a link in the description. So we are now up to September 2016, approximately four years ago from the time of recording, about nine months after I'd started living on my own. I had two Raspberry Pis, one connected to my piano, one connected to my daughter's piano, and some software that I'd written, which was running on the two and allowing me to play my daughter's piano remotely. Well, around about that time, I finished my contract at the Embedded Electronics Company. I moved up here to Milton Keynes. I got a new contract, a better paying contract, and I thought, it's time to take this idea up a gear. So I realized that I, with a software engineering background, knew nothing about materials, nothing about manufacturing, nothing about product development. So I was going to need a designer. So my search for a designer started at that time. Well, believe it or not, this stage took two years. It took two years because all that I found was design companies wanted to deal with other companies. They did not want to deal with what I now understand to be the derogatory term, Fred in a shed. They don't want to deal with people who are just full of wacky ideas who will waste their time. This made it difficult to get any contact with actual designers. Uh, a company in California said, yes, we'll take this project on, um, give us a quarter of a million dollars, we'll build it for you. In other words, go away. I managed to actually get to the, design, to the design studios of a handful of companies in the UK. Little bits of information came out to do with the type of materials that were possible. I was actually very happy with the fact that this thing I was hoping to build had adopted the anatomy of a snake. This actually made the language much easier. I could communicate to designers and engineers. They understood straight away what I meant by the head, the body. I also knew that this was going to be useful as one day I was going to write a user guide. Some of the users would be children. So it was much nicer to talk about the tongue, the nostrils, the head, the back, the belly, than to talk about figure number three, label number 17. So this is what happened for two years, looking for a designer. While this was happening, so picture this, there are two Raspberry Pis, but the Raspberry Pis are not neat little components. It's, it's just the first piece of proof of concept. But the Raspberry Pis have keyboards attached, they have computer monitors attached, and yes, you need to kick it off. Plus the software that I'd written was hardwired to connect my computer, uh, sorry, my Raspberry Pi with my daughter's Raspberry Pi. But obviously a, a real piano teacher would need an actual mechanism for being able to say, oh, well, I want to talk to this pupil now. I want to start what came to be known as a session with this pupil. So I was thinking, okay, we, to get rid of this keyboard and this monitor, what we'll do is uh, we'll have a, a little display on the back of the snake's head and you could get little li liquid crystal di displays, which are 16 characters by two rows. So that'll be enough to be able to connect to Wi-Fi, describe who you want to pick from a list, who you want to connect and have a session with. And I even went as far as saying, let's have a little control panel. And you press this button when you want to connect to Wi-Fi, and you press this button when you want to start the piano sharing session. So I got all this done, I even got little symbols and everything ready. 
And then one of the design companies that I spoke to, they said, we think this is a crap idea. Um, now, from their point of view, what they were saying was, look, the, the snake's going to look horrible with a stupid display on the back of its head and a bunch of buttons on its head. What we suggest you do, Mr. Wells, is build an app and then the app can talk to the snake via Bluetooth. I didn't like this idea. Um, the reason I didn't like it was because in the past I'd had trouble with Bluetooth. I mean, for example, getting a Fitbit to connect to a phone was fiddly, was difficult, it didn't always work. You had to exchange four digit pins or the same was true if you hired a car and you tried to connect to the Bluetooth kit in the car. It, it just wouldn't work very well. Um, but eventually I came to the idea of it being an app and Bluetooth, mainly because I realised that the app could guide you through setting up the snake. So rather than just rather than there just being a book and you go through the book and follow the instructions and the instructions say what to do next. The app could actually detect when you'd plugged it in. The app could actually ask the questions and then guide you through the setup process. That was an advantage. The other advantage, of course, was an app. With using an app was that the app could be updated any time. So it didn't have to be perfect first time. Whereas the software that was going to be running on the snake, I had to get that right first time because that would be installed for the life of the snake. So anyway, about, oh, the other thing was that uh, from having spoken to various designers, I realized that I, I wanted the snake to be made of a flexible material. I didn't want a stiff, long, silly, rigid, snake-shaped thing that couldn't bend at all. That would be horrible to transport um, horrible to store I wanted something that curled up nicely and could be dropped into a school bag the other advantage of making it from a rubberized material was it wouldn't damage the piano in any way you couldn't scratch the piano but also would grip the piano so that as it sat on the back of the keyboard and there is enough space on the keyboard, for, certainly for beginners and intermediary level pupils. It wouldn't bounce around, it would grip the keyboard. So I, I knew by this stage as well I wanted, wanted something rubberized. Eventually, so we're talking about November 2018, I got to a point where I found a company who, for a reasonable amount of money, said, yes, we will be happy to build this thing for you. I also like the fact that the company said, we'll work in milestones. So there'll be a price for each milestone of about eight milestones. Um, you can bail on the project at any time that you like. Um, so for example, milestone number one was, um, well, there will be an initial sort of concept assessment, uh, then a few rough sketches, um, then the first piece of computer-aided design, uh, then some 3D prints, then a working prototype, uh, then something more productionized, something more ready to send to the manufacturers. So I, I liked this company, I liked, I liked the idea. Um, what I also liked about this company was that they were prepared to handle both the, the hardware case, but also finding an electronics engineer and a firmware writer. So firmware being the dedicated software that runs on custom hardware. So, because I'd noticed there was a problem that the electronics engineer would say, well, how much space have I got to make the printed circuit board? And the designer would say, well, what are we putting in this case? Um, so handing both of those issues over to somebody else meant that they could argue amongst themselves and handle that conversation. That then left me to worry about the app 
and the software, which is the area where I felt more comfortable. So it was my job to send note over the notes over the internet. So that was it. November 2018, finally found a design company. Great. So I clicked the button to uh, begin the registration process. Name, Paul Wells. Address, Milton Keynes. Project name. Project name? I haven't got a project name. I haven't got a name for this snake. And that's the subject of chapter three. I'll see you in chapter three.